All right, guys, so I have made my way back in a creek. I started up here on this side, worked my way down by these docks. Just been using the live scope here, just looking. Normally, if I was out here fishing, I would be making cast after cast after cast all the way down through here. Well, today I'm not doing that. I'm saving myself some time just using the live scope. So I've come down through here and you can see all these marks. Let me adjust the transducer here. I'm shining toward this beam over here, this pole. You can see all these marks around here. All those, all those little blotches that are moving are fish. Now I don't know what they are. I'm not good enough with this live scope. Again, this is you know my first handful of trips here using this thing. I'm not good enough to see those and know what they are. But I'm confident they're fish because they're moving around there. So I'm just going to make some cast over here. See what we get. Y'all know me that watch my videos regularly. You know I love doing this ultralight fishing, and to be able to come out here. And use this live scope to look for schools of fish versus just hitting you know i got a fish right there right there he is that's a little bass that's a tiny bass but fish number one here is a large mouth well we know there's one large mouth on that uh on that post there oh, listen at him here he says he don't want to be on camera he said there's he said he's a he's a child there's child labor laws he can't be on camera getting paid or nothing so make some more there's a bunch of fish over here on this thing i'm just a few feet away from it now i'm letting that jig that's a one inch gulp minnow smelt color which looks like our shad out here it's the primary forage species right there's another one right there's another fish Oh man, that's a nice bluegill. That is a nice bluegill right there, guys. That's a big one, man. I'm gonna put him in the bucket here. I filled my bucket up full of water. I may keep a few of these just to have some live baits on the next catfish trip. Let me shine my transducer back over here. I'll show you again. So this right here, that solid pole looking thing, well, it's an actual pole here in this creek. And all of those marks around it there, and I hope you can see it, there's probably a glare on the screen, but all of that, those little marks, that's fish. I don't know what kind. We've got a largemouth and a bluegill so far. So it could just be a mixed bag, could be mostly bluegill again. I don't know what I'm looking at on this screen. I just know those are fish. So let's keep making some casts. Again, y'all that have watched my regular ultralight videos prior to me getting this live scope you've seen me just working at objects down trees docks uh, things that have fallen in the water you know just visible targets that i can that i can uh, see and i'll work this jig down into it and catch whatever i catch now some trees you come across let me make a cast over here to the left of the or the right of this thing some trees you come across will be stacked with fish like like the school here we're seeing on the screen and then you may go, go through 20 trees and they just not have nothing on them and so there's a fish i didn't feel him to see my line go tight so prior to me getting a live scope what i would do is just fish fish every object and just make cast i'd make two or three casts at each tree if I didn't get bit, I'd move on to the next one. And eventually, you know, you cover enough water, you hit enough trees, you come across a school. Well now, with the live scope, I don't waste casts. I'm just looking. I spend time, you know, it still takes me time scanning these docks, trees, whatnot. But I'm not making casts at random anymore. Now when I'm casting, I'm right here. I'm getting bit on every single one. Man, he's pulling too. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's another bluegill. That's another nice one too, man. They are all over this thing. He, he knocked my gold minnow off. That's a nice bluegill, man. Water temp here is 51 degrees. I am in a backwater creek off the main channel. It's another nice bluegill. I'll throw him in the bucket there. I ain't going to keep him maybe maybe two or three more 
So again, I'm, I'm setting in 15 feet. Now these fish up here, they're about between five and 10 feet deep and they are all over that pole, which is according to this, about 15 feet or so away from me, which is about right there from looking at it. Look at all that, man. They are just stacked up right there. We're gonna catch them every single cast. Let me get another gulp on. Y'all, this right here, this is my favorite ultralight bait. That is a one inch gulp minnow smelt color on a 164 ounce jig head with a number eight hook. This right here just catches everything. And I've got this on my ultralight setup. That's a St. Croix Panfish series rod, six foot long, ultralight action, two pound test line. This right here, this setup, you will catch a ton of fish with it. And they are all just a blast. Oh, I missed one right there. They are all just a blast to catch on this setup. Even the bluegill I've got here that are, you know, six, seven. I don't know if any of those would reach eight inches. I haven't measured any of them, but they're just a ton of fun on the setup. I'm just letting that thing sink down. Pull that one out a little too far. I need to adjust my transducer here. Looks like they are kind of just beyond. I'm going to cast up there beyond that thing. It looks like they're behind it. I think my motor noise or maybe me pulling some fish out of here may have spooked them a little bit. Yep, right there. <laughs> That's another big bluegill, man. That's another big one. That's probably what those marks I'm seeing there are, but I'm gonna tell you something. I don't care if they're bluegill or not. When they're this size, that's a dang nice bluegill. This one here is, I want you to look at this one's color. Let me get him unhooked here if I can. He's hooked good. Look at the colors on him. I mean, he's like a, it's yellow. He's literally yellow, yellow and like a pinkish purple right there. Nice, man. Let's keep him. He's going to be the last one that I keep. Throw him down there in that bucket. I feel like I need to move off this pole. Spotlock's got me moved a little close to it, but they're setting up here. They're beyond. There's some of them on the pole, and there's some of them just past it. I'm going to throw over here just past it again. Let's work this jig. I'll let it sink down and then work it back through them if it don't get hit on the fall. Most of the time, they're going to eat this jig on the fall. This is just... Ultralight fishing's fun anyway, but when I come up on a, a school like this and I know I'm going to get bit on dang near every cast, it's awesome. I don't know if this live scope's going to work out for me as far as catfishing goes. But boy, for the ultralight fishing, it's been a big help. There he is. I had that one work back almost to that pole there. <laughs> Man, he's fighting hard. I mean, look at that pole bend. When you get a, when you get a hard fighting bluegill this size on this ultralight setup, you can you can have a dang good time. Some rod bending action here. This bluegill here, I mean, he's thick. These are some big bluegill here. I got my board here with me under the seat. This board, this board don't start measuring until eight inches. So I don't know if he's going to reach. Well, he says he don't. He don't want to be measured if he can't measure up. He says. Listen, Bluegill, not everybody can be eight inches. That's what I tell the women, you know. Yeah, he's a little shy there, about seven and three quarters or so, but still, uh, I mean, a dang nice Bluegill, thick, hard fighting. I'm gonna let him go. I'm just gonna keep making some more cast over here, y'all. I'm gonna throw out here to this side of this pole too, see what's going on. Those of you that have been watching these live scope videos, I just got this thing last week. But uh, this mount that I've got it on on my kayak, 
used to have a handle on it right here and it was so long it was cutting into my seat and me i just got oh i got hit I got hit while i was talking so i've took i've taken that handle off so it won't get in the way and i just put a little piece of tape on here and that tape indicates to me which direction my transducer is going now so i can just turn this this oh i'm getting hit down here <laughs> while i'm trying to show you but now i can see which direction my transducer is pointing and not have that big handle right here in my way right there i got hit three or four times while i was trying to show you all my my pole there this one here's a little bit smaller one small in size but not in fight turn my transducer here again where i can see that i've spooked some of them fish y'all i've spooked some of them let me show you the screen now see all them fish that were there a lot of them have moved probably because i've been reeling their friends out of there one after another <laughs> there's still a few right there on that pole just beyond it i'm gonna i'm gonna make a few more casts here we'll get a few more on more off of here and then i'm gonna probably move on keep making my way around this creek find some more spots like this i'm digging this live scope for this application y'all catfishing so far it's kind of been a it's a neat novelty thing to be able to see fish come up and eat my baits but i haven't been able to use it like i had ideally hoped to so far it's still a work in progress with me understanding what i'm seeing on the screen getting the settings dialed in especially when i'm moving it gets harder to see things but for the ultralight fishing coming up on these trees and docks and everything and being able to see what's right there it's pretty cool i'm gonna make another cast closer to this pole here Hit that dang pole then, didn't I? I couldn't do that again if I tried. Let that thing sink down right there by that pole. The ones that are still left over there that I haven't either caught or run off are right on that pole. I'm getting tapped. There he took it. You see my line go tight. <laughs> That's another good one. Oh, he come free. Doggone. Drop another one in right there in their face on that pole. And they're down, y'all. They're down between 10 and 15 feet. I'm having to let that jig sink down. It's, you know, 164th of an ounce. There he hit it. It's got a very slow fall rate, but I've always felt like that helped me. The lighter the jig I can get by with, typically the, the better action I get. I think there's just something about that slow fall rate with these gulp minnows it's just it's irresistible to them it's irresistible to this fish you're lucky i caught you when you did bluegill because you're getting to go home see him swim right back over there probably yeah a lot of them fish y'all they've moved they've moved off that pole now they're right over here they're actually a little bit a little bit closer to me, I think. I know they're closer to me. Oh, here's some more coming up here by this pole. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a, make a cast right over there and just let it drop down beside it. Part of that challenge, you know, is figuring out, you know, relation. When you see those things in front of you, are they on the left, are they on the right? You know, I'm still getting that kind of thing dialed in. It's going to take a while. There's a good one. This live scope ain't something that you just turn on and it works. It takes a little bit of practice. Oh, this one ate it kind of deep right here. I think we may end up throwing him in the cooler. Listen, I don't know. He's got that jig down in his mouth. Let me see what I can do here. If he ate it too deep, we'll use him as cut bait. Let 
Oh, he actually come right out. You lucky bluegill. If you'd ate that a half an inch deeper, you'd be a goner. Y'all, I think all these fish over here on this pole in this area here are bluegill. And then we got that little bass to start out with, but I think all the marks I'm seeing, them little moving blotches on there, are probably bluegill. Which is fine by me. I don't mind. I love catching bluegill. Especially when you get the better quality like I'm getting out here today. Well, I had one tap me right there. Right there in front of me. Let's make another cast over here and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get one more off this thing and I'm going to move on, y'all. There he is. Well, I said I was going to get one more. Oh, man, look at him go. <laughs> Boy, he is a digging, man. Well, get out of your system, Bluegill. Go on. Boy, this might be the biggest one that I've caught here. Man, look at that thing, man. That's another just pale Bluegill. Just pale thing. Look at him, though, man. Where's that board at? We'll just measure him for those of you that care about that kind of thing. If I can get hold of him. Boy, he's wild now. He's wild on me. You know, that one there, y'all, he's... I bend his tail. He'll cross eight inches barely, but I mean, look at that. I mean, he's tall. He's thick. Oh, 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 oh. He's ready to get out of here is what he is. All right, Bluegill, you're going to be the last one, buddy. Last one off this spot. Not because I'm tired of catching jeans, but because I want to go see what else I can find in this creek. Get on, buddy. I'm going to shine this transducer back over here, y'all. So again, when I got out here, or before I started uh, casting, talking to the camera and stuff, I had this thing shining right at this pole. And y'all seen it. There was fish everywhere on it. You look here now, there's the pole. I've either caught them or I've spooked them because it's, it's pretty well empty now. So uh, anyway, I could keep making casts here, probably pick off a few more. I mean, that last one there was the biggest bluegill I've caught off this thing. But I think I'm going to move on. I'm going to keep working my way. Like I said, I started up here at the top of this creek when I come in, shining this thing at the down trees along these docks here and whatnot. And I saw some fish occasionally. You'd see a mark here, a mark there, some smaller stuff, which I assume was maybe either shad or, you know, smaller bluegill. But once I got back right here, that's when I seen a, a concentrated school of, you know, what looked like some, you know, bigger splotches and stuff. And so I thought, I'm just gonna make a few casts here, turn the camera on, and I don't know how many fish I caught here, 15, 20 probably. And, you know, I had a dang good time in just a few minutes. So. You know, again, how I would normally fish this if I was blind or just using my, you know, using my regular, regular graph here that just shows me depth and water temp and stuff, is I would have started at the top of this creek just making casts. A couple casts along the down trees, a couple, three casts along the docks. If I get bit, great, I keep working it. If I don't, I keep making my way along until I come across a school like this. So... It saves me, you know, it still takes time. It takes time to come down through here and scan everything with the live scope, but I'm not making random casts. I'm not wasting casts. Almost every cast I've made at this pole here got bit on, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave this spot here. I'm just gonna keep working my way back here in this creek, circling around, come up through here, hit these docks and these down trees and whatnot, and uh, just see what else I can find. Maybe more bluegill, maybe crappie, maybe some white bass or yellow bass. It doesn't matter to me. I'm out here with this jig pole and having a dang good time. So I think I'll probably just call this pole here uh, a video because, I mean, between the fish I've caught and me rambling on, this has probably went on for 15 minutes or so, which is long enough. So who knows? I get over here and find something else. Maybe I'll film another video. But uh, anyway, I don't know what the reaction is going to be. My first live scope video just come out 
uh, a day before me filming this video so I don't know what the reaction really is going to be to me using this fancy technology on the kayak but for this application I'm telling you I'm liking it and it's probably going to be sticking around for a while on it so hopefully y'all like it because I sure do but anyway I guess I will see you all in the next video which who knows may be filmed a few minutes from now I'll see you then thanks for watching